is the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you sack wagons! Brad of the Big Noise Evans here, joined by the good sir, fresh from Mexico, Nathaniel Lundy. It is indeed the Fade 5 Podcast, and Lundy is uh, probably done crushing margaritas, but... It matches well with a little Monday night football. We'll break it all down. Uh, the Packers and Raiders in Sin City, where I was last week for a whopping 36 hours. And Lundy, for the first time ever, I was stone sober in Las Vegas during that duration of time. I don't know what happened to me. Didn't even pop a gummy, but thoroughly enjoyed you two at the sphere. But beside the point, beside the point. Honk, honk, let's hop aboard the Plus Bus and uh, get on with the show, shall we? Plus 100 odds or greater. Maybe it's uh, the MLB playoffs. Maybe it's in the NFL. Maybe it's some sport nobody is remotely thinking of. Lundy, what is your favorite Plus Bus wager on this well, Monday? Well, first of all, uh, I'm, of course, excited because hockey returns uh, oh, to yes. the ice tomorrow night. Uh, and those of you that have been a part of the Fade Five for a long time recognize uh, that I'm uh, I'm I'm basking uh, in the glow. I, the horn <laughs> the horn is already sounding in the back of my brain. I cannot wait for hockey to get back uh, to action tomorrow. So make sure you're keeping an eye on the spreadsheet because we'll be clicking a little tab. We'll be adding in those hockey picks uh, for the upcoming season. I'm excited about that. But four plus bus four this evening, Brad. Hold, hold on, hold on. I think I'm having a heart attack. I am making a futures bet. Oh, okay. I am. It's All right, not I like very it. Far. It's not very far in the future, Brad, but I'm making a futures bet. Brad, over at DraftKings right now, give me the LA Dodgers to come back and win the series mm. plus 130. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I, the Diamondbacks surprised me in the wild card round. They did. I did not expect them to do what they did, especially having to go on the road uh, to be able to do that against Milwaukee. Uh, but I just think there's something about the firepower that is on this Dodgers squad, and I'm not ready to write them off um, at this point yet. So with that in mind, the best odds you can grab right now are at DraftKings for the Dodgers to come back and take the series against Arizona. You can catch that at plus. 130. So if you are a believer in the boys from Chavez Ravine like I am, go snag that one because it's down closer to about plus 115 at some of the other books. So you're getting a little bit of an extra pop out of DK if you want to jump on that one. And I'm just going to throw this one out there if in case you want to consider it. Uh, speaking of the teams that are playing tonight, it's plus 140 if you mm. think the Braves are going to do the same thing. Oh, muy interesante, and I wouldn't say the Braves are going to do the same thing because the Phillies uh, seem to be galvanizing at the most opportune time. Uh, they got the uh, pitching staff. They obviously have the hitters from top to bottom. They are raking right now. I think they're uh, I think they're going to beat the Braves. I can't believe what I'm saying. I said that actually on Live and Line before the series began, that the Phillies were the best value on the board to take the whole enchilada at plus 1,000 at Bet MGM, and kind of a uh, – correlate synergizing and bring it all together with what Lundy was selling you I think the Dodgers bounce back begins tonight on the plus plus Hong Kong I got tickets on an SGP LA to win on the money line straight up and I'm gonna slap that together with Mookie bets to get ahead you do that at bet MGM on that simple two-legger plus 110 uh they're not gonna fall 0-2 not at home not against the Diamondbacks. I know Arizona is uh, definitely surprised. Corbin Carroll has been blasting balls all over the field. Uh, but the Dodgers got to rise the occasion. I know Clayton Kershaw got absolutely rocked in his last start. Uh, Miller taking them out tonight. A respectable one and one on uh, 12 innings pitch in the regular season is two rotation turns against Arizona with four earned runs. Uh, but most importantly, he draws a ton of ground ball outs in those two starts against the D-backs. 22 balls registered on the ground is what he lured in total. L.A. has won six of its last 10 against Arizona and two of its last three games in Chavez Ravine. And then meanwhile, you look at Mookie Betts. Uh, he's got a hit. And six of his last nine games and a respectable five for 18 lifetime against Zach Gallon, who's going to be towing the rubber for the Diamondbacks. And Gallon, too, away from the desert. Bit of a different pitcher he's shown this entire season. A 4.42 road ERA 
in the regular season. So to recap on this SGP, if you like it, come with me. L.A., the Dodgers on the money line, and Mookie Betts to get a hit. Plus 110 gets seduced by that juice at BetMGM. With those bets on the board, let's get after it on this Monday with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. Monday Night Football, we got Raiders. We got Packers. Uh, Devontae Adams uh, sounds like he is actually going to be a go tonight. And that uh, plays maybe kindly, actually, into this prop at Numero Cinco. That's Jacoby Myers. And on the alt threshold, which I pulled at BetMGM, you can pull this up under the receiving receiving yards props. Uh, I'm going to take Jacoby Myers, 75 or more receiving yards, Against those Packers, plus 180, quite juicy uh, there, Lundy. Available at BetMGM. Uh, Jacoby Myers has been quite the revelation um, there in Southern Nevada this season. A guy splitting some time between the slot and outside. He's averaging 9.5 slot snaps per game, which is important. I'll get that uh, here in a minute. Uh, And also outside of seeing a lot of work as well. In total, 24.5% of the team target percentage share. Only number 51 in catchable target rate, but you got Jimmy Garoppolo cleared for takeoff. He is going to be back uh, coming off that concussion. When he is outside, he's going to see Razul Douglas, who's been decent in coverage, but not shut down. A 95.5 pass running allowed, 61.9 catch percentage, 11.6 yards per catch. But uh, the key is when he is in the slot, as uh, the matchup there is much friendlier overall uh, as a slot DB for Green Bay has given up well north of 100 pass rating to his assignments. And uh, cap it all off, you look at Jacoby Myers, he's got at least 75 yards in two of his last three games. And uh, not only that as well, uh, but Green Bay has allowed three 75 or greater yard ride receiver. So plus 180, yeah, I'll get sucked in. And again, seduced by the juice on him getting at least 75 yards against the Packers. Again, plus 180 at BetMGM. Lundy, pay to follow. What in the world makes you want to jump this all the way from the standard line up to 75? Uh, did you, like, the okay, so plus far. Plus 180, plus so 180. Far, so far in the last eight minutes, we have established the fact that you went to Vegas and stayed flipping sober the entire time. I had one time. glass of wine. One. Um, I'm sorry, what? You had wine? I had I had a glass of wine with dinner. I had a charcuterie board at Yardbird inside the Venetian and a glass of Malbec. It was delicious. You you didn't go see you two. You went and saw Wayne Newton, didn't you? <laughs> you did, didn't it's you? It's possible. It's possible. Dude had, folks, folks. He went to Vegas and had charcuterie yeah. and a glass of wine. I did. I just, I, <clears throat> okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, don't I had to know. work. I, I missed know. football season, man. I don't even know where to, I don't even know what to, I, I don't even, I, I don't even know what to do with you anymore. Um, I, I think you're getting sucked in by the juice on this one. And I'm not frankly willing to completely buy in on it. I like the over on his standard line, which is at 47 and a half. Mm. Um, I mean, that's a nice, decent number, but you're trying to pop this by another 28 yards to get to this threshold. So folks, if you want to follow with Brad, that's fine. I'm going to back this on a full unit play on just the standard line, because I do think that he's going to get those targets, uh, that you talked about and what he's done here so far, even with the re- return, uh, expected of Devonte Adams, the plus of Jimmy Garoppolo, in my opinion, those two things cancel each other out. So I think Myers has himself a good game. If you want to get sucked in by Brad, go right ahead. I'm going to play the standard line, or I'm going to use a standard line closer to that 47 and use that from an SGP standpoint. I don't know that I'm jumping all in with you and your freaking salami and Malbec. Uh, I'm telling you, man, that 9.5 slot snaps per game that he sees, he's going to get a lot of Keyshawn Nixon, who's given up a 118.5 pass rating. Raise a glass of Malbec. I'm cashing in on Jacoby Myers at plus 180. Number four. All right, Numero Quattro here on the Fade 5 Countdown. A whole lot of love. Is it on passing yards? Is it on passing touchdowns? Maybe it is an INT thrown. No! I say Jordan Love goes over. 16 and a half rush yards against Vegas. Minus 114. Best juice right now. Available 
at FanDuel. The truth be told, Lundy, I grabbed this when this line opened at 13 and a half a couple of days ago, and it's already March northward at 16 and a half. I would still play the over, play probably up to around 18 and a half, maybe 19 and a half. That'd be the breaking point for me. He's going to be hugging that 20 yard line on the ground, I feel, in the end. Uh, you look at uh, the opposition. And what they have allowed, uh, Kenny Pickett, they saw, uh, he's got a little juice in the legs, uh, only ran for 11 yards. Uh, but uh, Justin Herbert last week was a running fiend, had 27 yards on the ground. I think it was like on a dozen carries. He was all over the place. And Vegas really didn't have much of an answer. They weren't spying him at all. Uh, they might have a spy deployed tonight for Love, but he can be opportunistic or on some design scampers can chew up that real estate. Averaging 4.0 attempts per game, 18 rushing yards per game has been over this number in two of four contests in total. And look at Vegas as a collective number 21 in the National Football League, entering week number five in EPA rush defense. So dot the I, cross the T, give me Jordan Love. Over 16.5 rush yards against the Raiders. Minus 114 at FanDuel. Lundy, Vader, follow. I'm surprised you still found this at 16 and a half. I'm surprised it actually hasn't crept up a little more. I'm glad you got 13 and a half. Congratulations. Don't pull a muscle patting yourself on the back. Uh, the fact that you can still get this one where it is sitting right now, I think is value. So if you're listening to the pod yep. early, get on it while you can, because it wouldn't surprise me, Brad, for this to go up at another yard by the time we get to kickoff. I, I, I do think we're going to see something like that happen. So snag this one while you can, folks. This is a solid follow for me. Oh, love, love, love. My heart is going pitter-pat for the Rush Yards. Number three. Numero Trace here on the feed at five podcast. Let's do a little double dip of Josh Jacobs. JJ is going to be dynamite. And on this SGP, give me Josh Jacobs to score anytime touchdown. And Lang Numero Dose, give me Josh Jacobs to eclipse 60 rush yards. He put those two together. DraftKings plus 110. Great way to approach. I always say I've been doing this. Uh, pretty much every single time with Christian McCaffrey. But instead, on rush yards, I've been deploying San Francisco on the money line with him on an anytime touchdown and playing whatever it odds it is. I think it's like been anywhere from minus 120 to plus money. So similar strategy that I'm implementing here with Jacobs, and I think he'll cash in in the end. Uh, you look at the anytime touchdown prop. Uh, it's all about the red zone opportunities for him. He's already logged 13 red zone touches, uh, the ninth most in the National Football League among running backs. Green Bay, also number 27. Yikes. And EPA rush defense. They've allowed four running back touchdowns. And Jacob seeing a lion's share of the opportunity. That opportunity share specifically 82.9%, though he only has one touchdown on the season. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you look at the rush yards, his season high is only 62. So you might say, all right, you're going to be, uh, you know, sweating. You're going to be beating up on the brow about this. Uh, the yards at the contact per attempt, very uncharacteristic for him. 1.48 barf. That is RB 49 in the league. Uh, a little bit better missed tackle rate overall, but it's all about the volume. Pop up the volume, dance, dance. Uh, he's getting 15 to 20 rush attempts per game, and he's going to get a similar workload as long as the game script doesn't get lopsided. Green Bay has allowed 115.3 rush yards per game, along with 4.15 yards per carry to the running back position. So uh, tallying it all up and carrying the one, I say Josh Jacobs on oh, this SGP. Lundy, will you come with me? For him to score a touchdown, for Jacobs to get 60 or more rush yards, uh, those events occur plus 110 at DraftKings. Hey, to follow, amigo. Easy follow on this one. The rush yards, despite what he's doing in terms of his yards per carry, uh, which you're right, is uncharacteristically low. Um, I, again, uh, Jimmy G back off the concussion. The fact that he is going up against a team that's extremely vulnerable. You already gave the numbers. I'm not going to waste everybody's time with that one. But I think he gets yep. the touchdown. I, I like the anytime touchdown by itself. I like what you did to stack the two together to be able to take it to plus odds. So you put this together. I think the game script will call for it. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, I think they want to try to get him going. They're not dumb. They recognize that his numbers, his production so far is not necessarily what he's used to. And part of the reason that I think they can get him out of that is to just keep giving him the ball, yep. let him get to the point where he breaks something against a team that has been broken 
by some backs already this season through four weeks. Double down on that and try to get J.J. to a position where you can carry it with you now for the next two, three, four games as well. Use tonight, use the primetime lights as the way to be able to do it. That's where I think uh, McDaniels and the game script go tonight. Josh McDaniels, feed the man, feed him! Number two. All right, Numero Dose here on the Fade 5. Monday Night Football Spectacular. Let's go to Christian Watson in the Green Bay side of the ball. Give me the over on longest catch. And that yardage mark is 19 and a half. Will he have a 20-yarder or greater in this game against the silver and black? I said, yes, he will. Uh, and it's minus 120 right now. Available at a DraftKings. Also at BetMGM as well. And I'm playing it all diggity day long. Uh, returned last week. Uh, played uh, some limited snaps. Only 45.6% of the snap share coming off that tender hamstring. Uh, I think it's going to ratchet up to at least 60-70% of the snaps played in this game. Especially with the extended day of rest. I uh, ran 19 routes in total last week. Uh, four targets. Two receptions for 25 yards. But one of those was of great distance, uh, hitting the over on longest catch last week. Why? Because I bet on it. And I think he duplicates that endeavor as well. Going to get a lot of Marcus Peters in coverage. Uh, Peters on the wrong side of 30 is giving up a 112.1 pass rating and 70.0 catch percentage along with 12.0 yards per catch. I uh, look at Vegas uh, as a whole. And the defense is just lousy. They're number 30 in the NFL entering the week. An EPA per pass play defense. So they have been pretty miserable in that category. Really, across the board overall, whether they're defending the run or defending the pass, you can take advantage of them. And Christian Watson and that game's breaking speed that he possesses has the wheels to get the separation Catch a long bomb from Jordan Love and cash in with ease on this. So, Luddy, fade or follow Christian Watson. Will he make me some cash on the over 19.5 yards longest catch? Minus 120 at DraftKings. I'll follow on this one just because of what I saw out of uh, Vegas last week against the Chargers. I mean, Josh Palmer had a 51-yard reception uh, yeah. against them. He wound up catching a long bomb. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Keenan Allen also went over the 20-yard mark uh, with his, and I think Quentin Johnson fin finished just below. I think he had like a 17, something like that. Um, so you're right. This Vegas uh, secondary, extremely vulnerable, um, much like the Broncos' uh, rush defense. Uh, very, uh, very susceptible. Uh, and so with that in mind, I'm not, it, you know, it's not like I'm expecting Jordan Love to go absolutely, you know, apeshit crazy this evening. Um, but at the same time, all he needs is one good, solid look down the field, one chance for Peters to kind of fall asleep a little bit. That afternoon nap that some of us that get older need. Uh, I had a few of those in, in Mexico last week. Oh, uh, you're going to need uh, uh, you're going to need to stay on your toes against him. And I think you're right. The trajectory, the usage, the snap share should go in a positive direction for Christian Watson to be able to hit this number. Even if Marcus Peters slams the over on power naps, Watson's cashing in on longest catch. Number one. All right, numero uno here on the Fade 5, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Uh, he is part of the SGP. It's a two-legger, both wide receivers tied to the Green Bay Packers. I love, love, love and adore this little uh, two-legger, give me Dobbs, four more receptions, and give me Jaden Reed, three or more receptions, and he put those two together, plus money, plus 110 at BetMGM. And the reason why uh, I am on this, you look at Romeo Dobbs specifically, uh, he has gone four, two, five, and nine catches uh, over the first four weeks, seeing a sizable amount of the target share. So he's hit the over. And three of his first four games, getting 25.6% of that Green Bay Packers team target share. Uh, he is top 20 in total air yards, uh, really uh, cashing in from a distance or inside the red zone. I don't care how he catches the ball, just accumulate the receptions. So we have to sweat this out. He may have three or four by halftime in this game. So I love Romeo Dobbs on four more catches. And then uh, Jaden Reed. Three or more receptions for him really come on strong here of late. He has seen 19.4% of the team target share. He is number 20 in the NFL 
and average depth of target. That's a dot at 13.6. He's averaging 16.9 yards per catch. Uh, he is going over this uh, with relative ease uh, rather frequently as well. And, and a guy who has done this in three or four games uh, this season. So seeing the matchup with him and Amik Robertson in coverage, Robertson's given up a 66.7 catch percentage to his assignments at a 129.4 pass rating. So I think Jordan Love's got to have a lot of success tonight targeting to his two primary wide receivers and maybe not so much Christian Watson. Remember, he is not a high volume wide out by any stretch. He might see five, six targets at most. Uh, meanwhile, the dirty workers are going to be Dobbs and Reed underneath and occasionally beyond 15 yards. So with all of that, let's put it all together. SGP Romeo Dobbs could be quite poetic tonight. Four more catches. Jaden Reed, three or more catches on that two-legger, plus 110 at BetMGM. Lundy, my top play of the day. Fader follow. I know you are head over heels for this one, but I'm going to tell you the leg that worries me is Reed. Really? Yeah, it is. I think Dobbs is fine. I think Dobbs is. I think Dobbs is getting the looks. I think the more these two, the, the, the these two guys have played together, they just they're starting to find it. I think it's actually. I get a little bit concerned at Reed. Remember, he only had two catches in Week One, um, and I know that there's a there's been the momentum going in the right direction for him in terms of targets and catches, but the Reed leg is what worries me uh, about this one. So I want you to have your infatuation. I don't hate it. I think it's a good bet to make. I think it's a good one at plus 110. Would not be a full unit bet for me because I'm a little bit nervous about Reed. I'm worried about them getting others involved. Maybe it's Watson. I know he's not a high volume guy, but all you need is one look to go to Watson and take away from Reed, and suddenly you're not cashing this ticket. So I'm just throwing that out there. Just I'm just playing devil's advocate hey, here. Hey, you know what? I, I get worried when I pop the second gummy uh, because the first one hasn't kicked in yet. Uh, that uh, you know raises the bar of concern. Jaden Reed doesn't worry me in one way possible. He's getting at least three receptions tonight along with Romeo Dobbs, four or more catches. So Luddy's going to fade me on that, kind of, because yeah. he's weak sauce. But yeah. uh, we got some additional action. It's bonus time. Lundy, whether on the diamond, whether on the gridiron or somewhere else, maybe a future on the ice. What do you got for me, 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 go? Well, look, you come back from vacation, Brad. You're slightly, uh, you're slightly asleep, um, yeah, which is true. really kind of where uh, I, I told you I took some afternoon siestas. The best part was they were by the pool. So what am I gonna, <laughs> what am I gonna complain? You know, right up until the uh, the Cabo DJ started in on all of the dance remixes possible yes. of the greatest hits of ABBA. Um, oh. That's a you want to talk about, folks. You want to talk about an alarm clock from a nap. Uh, it's, it's, it's that it's a pounding beat mixed with, uh, mixed with, uh, uh, ABBA. Uh, it's, 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 it's like all of a sudden I got Meryl Streep playing DJ in my head here with some oh, Mamma wow. Mia. It's a little, uh, it's a little disheartening. So I just want to, uh, I just want to throw that out there. Uh, part of the reason that I'm not hundred percent in on Mr. Reed is because I actually think Mr. Watson might see a little bit more volume than you do. Oh, I will play the over, okay. uh, his yardage total, by the way, opened up this week in the upper thirties. It's now up to 43. I would still play it. I would not do it any higher than that, by the way, folks, if it goes higher than that, that before kickoff, I will stay away. But I do still like it on the over on his total yards of 43. Going back to what Brad and I were talking about, the longest catch, because he is more than capable of getting half of that number on one is why I'm still comfortable playing the over, even though Brad has the concerns that he does about the yardage, or excuse me, about the volume. I still think the yardage will wind up being there. It would not surprise me at all if he doesn't clock a 22-yard catch a 16 yard catch and all I need is one more little dump off uh, and we're fine. So I'm going to go ahead and still play that over as it sits at 43 and a half. Um, I don't think it's exactly a revenge game or anything like that. I know you like, uh, uh, I know you like uh, JJ for a touchdown. I'm going to go ahead and play a touchdown for Devonte Adams as well. I think he finds mm. the end zone. Um, I really do. I, it's sitting at minus 120, so you're paying some juice on that one. So you may want to do exactly what Brad did on Devontae Adams in terms of take the anytime touchdown, then put it with a low threshold, either receptions or yards, put it on something low and get that back up into plus territory like most anytime touchdowns are. So I didn't go through and do that this morning, but you get the idea of the exercise that I'm recommending. Do the same thing. 
that Brad did with Josh Jacobs. I would do it with Devontae Adams because I think he's going to score. Brad, do you know these two teams have only ever played four times? No, I didn't know that. Me, Interesting. Since they, since they became LV and all this, it's four times. Uh, Vegas has never uh, beaten them. They're mm. 0 and 4 as they sit at Vegas. Not the, thing that I do, the thing that I do enjoy out of uh, that particular statistic is that it's hit the over every time. I think there's going to be points tonight. And I think there's going to be points tonight because Vegas can't stop anybody. And I'm not exactly overly impressed by what the Packers are doing on defense right now either, if we're being completely in the trust tree with it. So I am going to play the over in the game as well. So if you want to jump in on that one, seeing it at 46 uh, and a lot of people playing the under, I don't know why. I just think we're going to see points in this contest tonight. Maybe finally an entertaining primetime game. So take that one. Let me go back over to the baseball diamond. You and I both believe that Philly is peaking at exactly the right time. And one of the guys that is peaking beautifully right now for the Philadelphia Phillies is Trey Turner, who so far in the postseason is batting a robust, as Brad would say, if he if I could roll my R's, 455 is what he's wow. batting right now in the postseason. It is absolutely a thing of beauty. And over the course of the contest he's played in so far, he is sitting with a lovely total base count of seven, and that is where I am going. Give me the over on one and a half total bases for Trey Turner, and that is at a plus 115 at DraftKings right now. Was debating between that and my Dodgers future as my favorite plus bus bet for this evening. But Trey Turner's got a 400 lifetime average against Max Freed, including a whopping 1,004 OPS. Folks, Turner's getting on base, and I think he's doing it more than once. Over the course of the three games he's played so far, he's got two doubles mixed in there as well, and he's got the the three hits here in the postseason, but if you actually go back to the egg, end of the regular season, he's sitting on a seven-game hitting streak right now. He's just feeling it, and if you're going to give me his total bases at plus odds, oh, Break out the I don't even have a sledgehammer here. I've got da, 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 I'm doing oh, it for you. There you go. Thank you, Brad. Thank you for having the props handy when I the only prop I ever have handy on this damn podcast in the morning is my coffee, as y'all are well aware. So <laughs> um as much as I like the Dodgers on the plus bus, my favorite bet for tonight, baseball or football is Trey Turner over on the total bases. Give me all of that right now because dude is raking at the plate and is about to face off against a guy that he's got success. I yield the floor to the gentleman from Illinois. All right, let's go with the team. Wave us parlay play today. I already mentioned every single one of these legs, so let's uh, ramp it up a notch here and slab them all together. Josh Jacobs, anytime touchdown. Josh Jacobs, 60 or more rush yards. Romeo Dobbs taking it down from four receptions to three. Oh, then that leg, that's going to screw me, according to Nathaniel Lundy. Jaden Reed at three or more catches. All four of those legs hit. Oh, he has worked the shoulders. Gets a deuce by that juice. Fools at plus two thirds at BetMGM. I'm not going to give any additional reasoning. I just like every single damn one of these legs. Uh, elsewhere in fairness time, I kind of agree with Lundy. This game has got some shootout appeal. It really does. Uh, it's not like the Packers have been uh, outstanding defensively by any stretch of the imagination, and we know uh, how much of a sieve the Raiders are, and that kind of plays in the kicking props. And Anders Carlson of Green Bay, give me the over. Six and a half kicking points, uh, minus 105. Actually, no, check that, plus 100 right now at BetMGM. Uh, two guys have done this against Vegas this season. Remember, Las Vegas, number 30 in the NFL, the EPA per play defense. Uh, Carlson, a perfecto, five for five from field goals. Uh, and in that range, doesn't matter where he's kicking it from. He's five for five and nine for nine on extra points. He's only gone over this one time in four games this year. Uh, but in a game in which there should be crooked numbers on the scoreboard, uh, I believe Anders Carlson hits the over on six and a half points. Again, at even money right now at BetMGM. Uh, also in this game, Aaron Jones, So I think it's going to play. He's been practicing on a limited basis all week long, despite that tender hamstring. I'm taking the over on receptions for him. That number is just two and a half. And the best odds of the business at BetMGM at plus 125. I know he's been limited. 
He only played on 20 snaps, uh, I believe, in the last game. But uh, still, uh, over the couple of games he has played, he has ran 21 total routes. And a guy last season went over uh, two and a half receptions in a game a dozen times. Now, granted, we got a different quarterback. That was Aaron Rodgers. Now we got Jordan Love. But he still runs a ton of routes. And he is a, uh, a factor in the pass game. And Vegas, as well, has given up 5.3 receptions per game to the running back position. So Aaron Jones over 2.5 catches at plus 125. And I'll tell you one more thing yeah. with Joe, by the way, folks. Keep in mind, they have been off for 11 days. He's had a yeah. break. He's, I know he's dealing with the hammy and everybody's been nervous about him, but this is exactly what you would want to have happen on the schedule if you are the Packers and you're worried about Aaron Jones. All right, and then my last election uh, is uh, kind of coinciding with one of Lundy's picks uh, in that Philadelphia and Atlanta series. Uh, on this two-legger SGP, I'm going to take Trey Turner just for a hit, and I'm going to put that together with Nick Castellanos. Unbutton that top button, Lundy, and let the chest breathe to also get a hit. Both those guys slap on the outfield. You're looking at plus 100, even money. Uh, right now at BetMGM, again, Turner has done this in seven straight games. Lonnie mentioned it, 455 batting average in the postseason. Also, 11 for 30 lifetime as a 367 batting average against Max Freed, who's taking the ball tonight for the ATL. And then, uh, meanwhile, you look at Cassianos. Yeah, he's just two for 12 so far in the postseason. Uh, but he has gotten a hit in five of his last seven games against Atlanta. And he is four for eight lifetime against Max Freed. And Freed, too, is a southpaw. And against LHPs of the regular season, he had a 324 batting average. So Turner gets a hit. Cassianos gets a hit. It is plus 100. There, there he was. At there he was, written down in the notes. He was one of the guys to focus in on. I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Brad was right off the top. Philly's getting hot, man. Philly's getting hot, and Atlanta's got to figure out how to cool them off. And I don't know if the Braves can do it. I don't think they're going to extinguish him, man. I'm telling you, Philly is rolling all the way to the World Series and may win the whole shebang. Uh, we are done here with the Faith Five Podcast. Do us a favor, would you kindly? Give us a rating and a review at your convenience. Also, Fader, follow us on the X or the Twitter. Uh, follow Lundy and all his free spreadsheet picks at Nate Lundy. I do the same damn thing at Noisy Huevos. The well tan Nathaniel Lundy. I'm Brad Evans. Until next time, as always, feed or follow, that is up to you.